Fall is such a crucial season for me. So much to do, so little time. And I love Caraway cookware because I can cook healthy meals and still minimize my time in the kitchen. Caraway's non-stick kitchenware makes cooking a breeze and cleanup easier than ever. And their non-toxic chemical-free ceramic coating means food can be prepared with peace of mind that no hard-to-pronounce chemicals will leach into my healthy ingredients. Visit CarawayHome.com slash Respectable to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners. So visit CarawayHome.com slash Respectable or use code Respectable at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. Preparing for growth and change as a business owner saves time and headaches later. Right now, it's the calm before the holiday storm, but you can prepare your e-commerce business for the holiday rush right now just by using ShipStation. Whether you're shipping from your house or a warehouse, if you're preparing for a holiday ship, no matter the size, ShipStation will make your life easier. Set your business up for holiday season success with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use code RESPECT today and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code RESPECT. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable. Yo. This French Riviera vacation, I cannot get the weather right for anything. I get down to Marseille, which many people were like, it's not Marseille, it's Marseille. I got down to Marseille last Wednesday and it was blazing hot. Like it was 92 degrees every day. So I had to get up super early in the morning and do the things that I wanted to do and then find some shade or go back to the hotel and take a nap, something where I was indoors during the height of the day. And that was fine. Work around it. And then I finally get to Cannes. The first day, the weather was decent. And I got here at like 2.30. I took an afternoon train. It was only two hours from Marseille to Cannes. Went and got something to eat. And then I went to this beach club near my hotel. Probably like 4.30 when I got there. And they were like, oh, we close at five. We close at five. So it doesn't make sense to get a beach chair. Look, All I wanted since I went to the beach in Lisbon, it was such the perfect beach day at a beach club. I have wanted to just lay on a beach chair and do nothing for an entire day. This is part of my whole purpose in coming to the French Riviera. I have been here for a week. Do you think I've been on a beach chair once? I've been having a wonderful time. I am not complaining. But the day that I didn't sit on the beach chair was the only nice day until today. Sunday and Monday, the weather for the most part has been absolutely terrible. Cloudy, overcast. Whenever it was not raining, I had a point to go do some of the things that I wanted to see. There's really not that much to do overall in Cannes. You can walk the riverfront. You can go shopping. There's an overlook. There's a couple cathedrals that are worth seeing. But for the most part, it's go to some beach clubs, do some shopping, eat at really cute restaurants. All things that pretty much require not raining weather. So whenever it wasn't raining, if I looked out my window and saw it wasn't, then I just grabbed my stuff and I was like, well, let me go do what I can. Or when it is raining, like I went and got my nails done because I hadn't had them done since London. And I've been gone three weeks. Like I looked, I looked feral. So there was an upside to the rain. I was able to take care of some personal upkeep and not feel like I was missing out on something. But today was the first good weather day that we've had since I've been here. And th- and I took a boat to Saint-Tropez. It's probably like an hour and 15 minutes away by boat. It was a cute day. Um, Saint-Tropez is a really small city compared to Cannes, especially to Marseille. It's a perfectly lovely place. Big, big yachts, big, big money. But it was just super, super crowded. I went to the market and it was like, I described something the other day as being like the club let out. Or the concert let out is what I said. That's kind of how it was just walking through the market. You know, they were selling knockoff Zimmerman dresses at the market. Zimmerman dresses are, you know, minimum like $800. But they were selling knockoffs for $220 at the market. They were good knockoffs too. But it's not one of the dresses that I want. But I ended up going to the beach. And there was like this tiny little beach club there. But their beach chairs were full. 
So I ended up just hanging out at the bar. It was nice. And it was right on the beach. So I just took off my shoes and enjoyed the breeze and the views. So many boats. It was cool. I got something to eat and just came back on the boat. I'm supposed to switch cities tomorrow, but I'm going to spend most of the day, I think, in Cannes. I just want to lay on a beach chair and catch the breeze. And the beach here is so beautiful. The water is super powerful. I have no desire to get in it. I just want to be close to it. I'm going to spend all day tomorrow at a beach club and then take the train to my next destination. All I want is a good beach day. I'm not mad at anything else, even with the heat, even with the rain. Um, The next four or five days, because I'm like obsessively checking weather reports, are supposed to be really good. So I'm looking forward to that. What else is going on? There's a long list of news this week. Everyone and their mother... I think I knew about it last week's episode and I was like, I'm not discussing this. Like, it's the dumbest thing. People kept hitting me up about Marjorie and Steve. Like I was married to one of them. Like people were like, say it ain't so. Say it's not true. Do you have any insider knowledge? I know the woman that wrote Steve's book, Deneen. Y'all know Deneen. She's been on the show a couple of times. I'm sure she has some access to Steve. I'm not calling her about this nonsense. The rumors didn't even make sense. And I'm only bringing it up now because Steve and Marjorie have both addressed it, both to debunk it. Steve was speaking at InvestFest over the weekend before he could even talk about money and investment and strategy and building an empire, any of those things. He had to address the rumors about his marital situation first. He was like, we fine, we good, which is insane to me. These people are in their 60s and late 50s, have been married for 15 years And still got to listen to wild, widely circulated, crazy rumors about their marriage. But Steve said we good. He said he wanted to cuss, which I was like, really, sir, really, you could cuss everybody out and still be in the right. Ask God for forgiveness. He'll give it. He'll grant it. And then Marjorie, she posted on Instagram. She posted some Bible verses (laughs) which people were like, she's guilty. Only guilty people post Bible verses. And I was like, y'all just want to believe this shit. But she posted something like, you know, how to handle it when people lie on you. But if she post, I'm actually going to pull it up. Because she said something about like she's been blessed with the platform. And people were like, ma'am, you don't speak. What, what exactly is your platform? I'm looking at her page now. She posted, <laughs> she posted a Bible verse. And it was a picture of sunset. And it said how to handle being lied about. And then she directed people to a website. She said in her caption, she said, my husband and I don't usually stop to address all the foolishness and lies that have been spread about us. However, to whom much is given, much is required. I understand that with my platform comes some sort of responsibility to those that may not be as strong as we are. Read and share this with your loved ones that may not know how to properly cope. God bless all of you. Christian shade. But no, but the rumors about them, it was so blatantly not true. And I said as much when I posted about it on Facebook, even before Marjorie or Steve had addressed it. I was like, this shit doesn't make sense. The rumor was that Marjorie had cheated on Steve with two of his staff members. I think it was the personal chef and the trainer. They said Marjorie had filed for divorce in LA back in July. If you file for divorce, it's a public document. TMZ literally has people at courthouses or people who go to the courthouse and go through the files every day to see what's been filed. That's one of the ways that they get their news. Please believe if Marjorie Harvey had filed for divorce back in July, whatever date it was, July 1st, TMZ would have had that ish by the end of the day, if not 7 a.m. the next morning. Stop it. People were like, oh, she filed for divorce. Great. Where's the public record of it? Where's the public record? TMZ ain't got it. And this happened six weeks ago. It didn't happen. The other part of the rumor was that she's trying to take half of Steve's money, which Steve would have to be an idiot not to have a prenup. But okay, that was the only part about it that kind of made sense. Because they're based in LA and they've been married more than 10 years, she could go after half the money. Here's the other part that was crazy. They were like, yeah, Marjorie seeking custody of two of the children. Custody of who? Because the youngest child is Lori. Lori's what, 25, 26? Custody of grown-ass people? 
And the two kids they listed that Marjorie was trying to get custody of are Steve's biological children. Even if they were minors, Marjorie would have no legal right to them. She's not a biological parent. What are you talking about? The rumors just made no sense. But here's the part that got me. The people that wanted to believe it. It clearly made no sense, but people were just like, see, we knew she was a gold digger and that's what Steve gets because he wanted to be a relationship expert. He, He wanted to dime out men on how we behave about women. He's a simp and that's what he gets. Like, really? Marjorie and Steve, again, been married 15 years. Folks was upset like they future talking about Russell and Sierra. Big mad, wishing for the downfall of this union. And I'm like, look, We've talked about Marjorie on here. We've talked about some of her past, alleged past. We talked about her ex-husband writing a book, telling state secrets. And by his own admission, he ain't talked to the lady in 15 years. A lot of it, even if it's true, is old tea. It's a 15-year pour. Y'all really think Marjorie gonna fumble the Steve bag? An estimated $300 to $400 million bag to be fucking with the trainer or the chef? Come on. Come on. The folks were eager to believe it, wanted to believe it. And even after Steve was like, we good. And even after Marjorie was like, they lying. Folks wanted it to be true. And I was like, what is wrong with your lives? But you really want married people to be caught up in a scandal. It's enough married people to actually do have scandal, like for sure scandal. Like they be online telling their business firsthand. The call is coming from inside the house. But Marjorie and Steve, there's nothing to see here, folks. The rumors didn't even make sense file for custody of some children that ain't biologically yours and that are like minimum, minimum 27. Come on. (sighs) Fall is such a crucial season for me. So much to do, so little time. And I love Caraway cookware because I can cook healthy meals and still minimize my time in the kitchen. Caraway's non-stick kitchenware makes cooking a breeze and cleanup easier than ever. And their non-toxic chemical-free ceramic coating means food can be prepared with peace of mind that no hard-to-pronounce chemicals will leach into my healthy ingredients. With so many collections of their internet-famous kitchenware to explore, there's a Caraway for every kind of cook. Every set comes in various modern shades to fit with any design aesthetic. And for folks who don't have a lot of space, it includes easy access storage solutions to keep your kitchen tidy. And now, introducing Caraway's Prep Set, 10 essential knives and utensils designed for chopping better, prepping cleaner, and storing easier. I love how easy Caraway makes it to prepare healthy, non-toxic meals, and get me in and out of the kitchen faster. I'm not the only person who loves Caraway. Over 50,000 people have raved about their Caraway kitchen. Now it's time to try it for yourself. Visit carawayhome.com slash respectable to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners. So visit carawayhome.com slash respectable or use code respectable at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. Let me ask you something. What if there was someone out there who kept a log of every single thing you did every minute of the day? I think that would be pretty creepy. Well, what if I told you that's exactly what happens every time you go online? Your internet provider is allowed to store logs of every website you've ever visited and can legally sell this data to anyone. That's why I use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers, so your internet provider can't see or log what you do online. Now, many of you might be wondering, well, if I'm routing all my data through a VPN, then doesn't that just mean the VPN can see what I'm doing and log my data instead? And you're right to think that. Many VPNs claim to have a no-logs policy, but have been caught logging customer activity. ExpressVPN is the only VPN I trust because they use trusted server technology. They were the first major VPN provider to engineer all of their VPN servers to run in RAM. This makes it impossible for the VPN servers to store any data, including logs of any ExpressVPN customer. And you don't have to take my or ExpressVPN's word for it. 
ExpressVPN is so confident in their no logs claim, they even had one of the biggest assurance firms, PricewaterhouseCoopers, audit their technology. That's why ExpressVPN is rated number one by CNET, Wired, TechRadar, and countless others. Stop letting people keep logs of what you do online. Visit expressvpn.com slash ratchet right now and find out how you can get three months free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash ratchet. Expressvpn.com slash ratchet to learn more. Preparing for growth and change as a business owner saves time and headaches later. Right now, it's the calm before the holiday storm, but you can prepare your e-commerce business for the holiday rush right now just by using ShipStation. Whether you're shipping from your house or a warehouse, if you're preparing for a holiday ship, no matter the size, ShipStation will make your life easier. With ShipStation, you can easily automate shipping tasks and manage orders in one simple dashboard. Quickly and easily update crucial order information and reduce errors. And there's effortless integration everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. You can manage orders, print labels, compare rates, optimize every shipment, and automate delivery notifications. With ShipStation, you can get discounts up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. And over 130 companies, including my own, have grown their e-commerce businesses with ShipStation. Set your business up for holiday season success with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use code RESPECT today and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code RESPECT. Also, speaking of drama, we spoke last week about Halle Bailey, who may or may not be pregnant. We still don't know. It's not really our business to know, but, you know, it's something that's circulating. We talked about how Chloe had defended Halle. What I left out of the story, and I was aware of it last week, I actually talked about it when I recorded and then went back and edited it out as a professional courtesy. I don't know how this actually started. I think Funky Dineva. Quentin, he's a personal friend. I texted him after he apologized and and told him that was the right thing to do. I'm glad that he did. And I told him I was going to speak about him on the podcast. One of the reasons I didn't speak about him last week, he was getting beat up pretty bad. I didn't like his commentary about Chloe. I thought he took it too far, which he acknowledges that he did. I wanted to give him a chance to address it before I spoke about it. The same way with Steve and Marjorie. I didn't talk about it last week until Steve and Marjorie gave a response. It's the courtesy professionally that I would want someone to give to me. I don't know exactly how this story happened. I think it was there was speculation about Hallie being pregnant and Funky Dineva had commentary on that. And then Chloe got wind of the commentary and responded. And then Funky Dineva said some very unkind things about Chloe personally, which it was very, very nasty. I'm not going to repeat it. He also spoke about what he felt was her inauthenticity being what I would actually call hypersexual, which critiquing her work, fair, kind of, because the story was actually about Halle Bailey and not Chloe, but Chloe did enter the conversation in defense of her sister. So she put herself out there to be critiqued Um, But he said what he said, and the internet reaction was swift and brutal. People had much commentary um, on his own work and his own appearance. I don't think it's necessary to rehash the commentary that folks made about his physical appearance either. But he did have a come to Jesus moment, which I did appreciate. And he did go ahead and apologize to Chloe. It wasn't the best apology. Because before he got to the apology part, he was like, I just want to be clear. I stand 10 toes down about my commentary, about the inauthenticity of her performance and this hypersexual nature. It's not who she is. But I do admit the commentary about her personal appearance was uncalled for. And I apologize for that. This is exactly what he said. I just pulled up the quote. (laughs) He did say, this is where I think he should have started. 
I don't have my head too far up my own ass or so far in my own ego that I can't recognize the fact that I did cross the line when I started talking about her looks. That was below the belt. It was not necessary. And it was not germane to the story at hand. And for that, I do apologize. This was a learning lesson. And I hope to move forward and not repeat it. Let's hope. He was actually supposed to go on Simone's show. And Simone Sanders. He was supposed to go on Simone's show to, to talk about the Chloe Bailey incident. And I imagine... Not to say it's part of an apology tour. I imagine he would have also recognized his wrongdoing on Simone's show. However, the segment was canceled due to the shooting in Jacksonville, which for obvious reasons would take precedence. I've known him for for years and years and years. This ain't the first time he said something crazy. Part of his brand appeal is saying the things things that people sometimes think but don't go as far to say. A lot of times it works for him. This is an instance where it does not. A lot of the commentary he gives is about people that in general folks don't really like. And folks will join him in the comments to give a good drag. Folks believe that when they don't care for someone, that it's open season to say whatever they want. Chloe Bailey, even though there's lots of conversation about her being hypersexual, I don't think that she's actually disliked. I think people like her and her sister and Hallie very, very much. They recognize that both of them are supremely talented young women. I think folks feel, and let me say some folks, not all, because there are some people that completely buy in. But I think there are folks that feel like Chloe's sexuality overshadows her talent. We know you have range. We know you can sing. We know you can dance. Like, we just don't need to see your ass. Very shapely, though, it may be. We just don't need to see it 24-7. Like, we're actually here for you and your talent that we very much acknowledge that you have. So, like, can you show us that? I think people actually very much root for her. They just want something different artistically than what she offers in her music. But Chloe, much like her sister, is pretty unproblematic. She shows her ass, but she's not like a public nuisance. She doesn't get on her platforms and and drag people. She's not messy. She just, you know, shows her ass. That's it. She's also super young. And I think a lot of people, especially folks who follow Funky Dineva, he's 40. So I would say most of his core audience has been coming up with him. The core of them are probably like in their 30s. Chloe's like 25, 26. It's kind of like you went off on her niece. It just wasn't necessary. It was too far, which again, he acknowledges. If he made those comments about somebody that people disliked, and it wouldn't be right then either, but there wouldn't have been a public dragging about it. He covers a lot of content about women on reality shows. If what he had to say was about one of them, he wouldn't have been dragged. It's just people like Chloe. We're just all over the place today. We didn't start with good black news. We started with the big dramas, but we should talk about good black news. Cardi is on the cover of Mexican Vogue. I know folks are like, did you just say black and and then just started talking about Cardi? Yes, because black Latina is black, not black American, still black though. But Cardi is on the cover of Mexican Vogue looking amazing. I had to zoom into the pictures to figure out if that was her hair or not, because she has a bunch of hair. That's one of the best lace fronts I've ever seen. She looks amazing. Hair, face, body, makeup, head to toe. She looks absolutely great. I didn't read the article yet. I mean, obviously it's a September issue and Cardi is a well-known fashionista. Her team keeps her together. I wondered if there was a bigger hook to the story than it just being the September fashion issue and Cardi being known for her fashion. I'm very curious about if there's new work coming. There's been lots of singles. I didn't know if there was an album on the way. She's been doing just fine without one. But I've seen multiple people complain. I mean, Cardi is a, is a person who's very polarizing. Again, like if Funky Dineva had said something about her, if he'd said something about her, I don't think people would have had the same reaction as they do for Chloe. If he said something about Marjorie, people wouldn't have had the same reaction as they do to Chloe just because, you know, there's a lot of folks who don't like them. But one of the complaints about Cardi is like, well, you know, she's a rapper and she's got this Grammy. Her last album was when? When are we getting new music? (laughs) It's so funny when people say stuff like that. You, you do realize that her album, like working on an album, the money that she makes off an album is probably her least paid opportunity. It's like the same thing with people talking about Rihanna. They're like, where's an album? We haven't had an album in 
she makes way more money doing less work on her other projects. It's almost like, I don't know, doing a podcast versus writing articles or even books. Go figure. The cost benefit analysis just doesn't add up. But folks tend not to think about that. Like they want what they want. Where's the album? Where's the album? Where's the album? Where's the book? Where's the book? Mm. Some folks call it lazy. Other folks just call it, you know, focusing on the ROI. But I would like another album from Cardi. If and when she gets around to it, I just understand why she might not want to get around to it right now. But currently she's on the cover of Mexican Vogue. So she hasn't lost any by way of popularity by not putting another album out. Give the girl that. I remember when they talked about she had 15 minutes. And then when she had the first baby, that little girl's got to be, what, four or five now? Culture. And they were like, it's the end of her career. And yet, as you can see, she is still here. Also in good September news, you know, I live for the September issue of magazines. Zendaya is on the cover of Elle. I love her and her stylist. Or is he former stylist? Law Roach. He's listed on Wikipedia. Not that Wikipedia is a reliable source, but he's referred to as retired American fashion stylist. He did say he was done styling. I did read this article. She referred to him as family. And then she cleared up some of the rumors. When he had announced that he was no longer going to be styling, people had attributed his departure. He didn't say departing from fashion. He said departing from personal styling. But people attributed his departure to... There was a video circulating at a fashion show and he didn't have a seat. And people blame Zendaya for that. Like, like she put the event together. Or even if like she's the one who was invited, actually RSVP'd herself. I think it would take a little bit more than that for a person to quit their whole job. I mean, and not just with her, like with everybody. So yeah, so she cleared it up in the story and was basically like, nope, that had nothing to do with it. That's not on me. He's family. We don't have beef. Let it go. Um, so I was like, not that I really thought they had beef. He's talked about his his transition out of styling. And he said a long time ago it had nothing to do with the Zendaya issue and that she was family and he would still work with her. But I guess, you know, now that she's the A-lister who's now addressing it. So it's the official version of the story now. They're still friends. They're still working together in some capacity. But she does acknowledge that she has a new creative director. That's fine. What else do we have? I don't think this is good black news. I think this is just news nonetheless, which is <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg <laughs> is not a lesbian, which seemed to shock a whole bunch of people. She did an interview with Raven Simone and Raven, who is a lesbian, just assumed Whoopi Goldberg was. And Whoopi was like, no. <laughs> She was like, I know plenty of lesbian people. I have nothing against lesbians. I have lesbian friends. <laughs> but I am personally not one of them. <laughs> We've only seen Whoopi associated with men over the years. I mean, that means absolutely nothing. There's tons of men we've seen associated with women, but their heart belongs to another man. But Whoopi's been, I think, married and divorced to a man. I think because she doesn't, not that she doesn't wear dresses and things, but you know, she's not like a big makeup person. She doesn't adhere to, how do I want to phrase this, stereotypical ideas of, of femininity or femme behavior. And so people had just sort of assumed and like, no, no. If we go back over the years, everyone we know would be to date. It's not a long list of people. Only one I can really think of is Ted Danson in the blackface scandal. So funny the way Raven Simone asked, because she really just assumed and knew she was right. They used to be colleagues. I mean, she felt like she knew Whoopi. <laughs> Raven Simone specifically told her she was like, because you know, you give lesbian vibes. <laughs> who says that? It's one thing if you say it to somebody who, you know, actually is a lesbian, but this is not the case. This is what Raven said to her. <laughs> she said, quote, I want to just dig in your business a little bit. This is a safe space. Honestly, when I was around you, I loved you so much. I just wanted to be up underneath the titty the whole time. But that's also because you kind of gave me lesbian vibes. <laughs> and then she repeated it. She's like, you give me lesbian vibes. You give me stud vibes. <laughs> I'm reading this on WIO News. You know, I'm overseas. I don't have my VPN on. So it's just showing me all sorts of random stuff. 
But there's a lot of quotes from the exchange of Whoopi and Raven and also Raven's wife. And the article notes that that Whoopi has been married three times, which I was like, really? There's a drug counselor, a Dutch cinematographer, and an actor. Were they all white? I'm going to go ahead and assume the Dutch cinematographer isn't black. And then the actor's name was Lyle Trachenberg. I'm going to go ahead and assume he wasn't black. Is Alvin Martin black? This means nothing. I'm just kind of curious. Alvin Martin... Whoopi Goldberg. Nope, he was white too. Oh, that's what she's into. She like white boys. Okay. Kiki Palmer, her child's father, celebrated Kiki's 30th birthday together. That's all we know. Kiki posted up an Instagram video. They were out getting something to eat. She thanked him for celebrating her birthday with her. I have absolutely no idea what that means. That's why I'm just completely sticking to the facts. I have no idea whether they're together or not. Nor do I need to know. The folks were like, she hustled us all. Did she? I don't think that was a hustle. I think she, you know, legit went to the Usher show and he legit had an issue with her outfit and put it online. It became a big scandal. And then she milked the moment for what it is. It's not like Kiki Palmer was lacking in attention either on social media or mainstream publication. Maybe like a week or two after that whole Usher incident and then dude tweeting took place. She was on the cover of the Cut magazine. She was already going to be on the cover. Like she's, she's Kiki Palmer. She's been around for a really long time. It's not like she really needed that kind of scandal to like up her celebrity factor. No, I think the incident happened and she milked the moment. Whether they're together or not, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I saw a picture of her. She had this gorgeous red dress. I want to say she was with Victoria Monet. It was giving Jessica Rabbit. It's also very sexy. And again, don't know if she's with old boy or not. But I hope he got off her ass about what she chooses to or to not wear as a grown-ass woman. That's what I'm trying to say. What else is on our list? Oh, Shannon Sharp. Where was he? He wasn't on ESPN. Shannon Sharp used to be on Fox Sports. He didn't get along with his co-host. I'm sure there was other things going on behind the scenes. Skip Bayless was his co-host, but they didn't get along very well. And Shannon Sharp decided to go his separate ways. He since announced that he will be joining ESPN. He's going to be on first take on Mondays and Tuesdays during football season. Good for him. I'm glad he landed somewhere. I also saw that his podcast, Club Shay Shay, has found a new home. He did a big rollout. It was in The Hollywood Reporter about his partnership with the volume. And he made a really big deal to say that it's a partnership. It's a partnership. It's a partnership. It's a partnership. Good for him. Here's the good money to be made in podcasting. If you have a good platform, I'm glad to see him land on his feet because he was really unhappy in his previous situation. It was starting to show. So he got out and he's out on his own terms. I wish him nothing but the best. I want much success for him. Last but not least, I've been following this story out of Spain. This soccer kiss. So the Women's World Cup happened. Spain won over England. One of the big players for Spain, her name is Jenny Hermoso. I'm reading this on BBC.com. The Spanish Football Federation president, Luis Rubiales, was celebrating with the Spanish women's soccer team. For whatever crazy ass reason, he grabs one of the players, Jenny Hermoso, by the back of the head and kisses her. People see it and are like, WTF, that's not okay. So there's a backlash about what he's done. He releases a statement and he was like, Jenny, she lifted me up. I told her a little peck is in celebration. And she said, okay. He says it was a spontaneous kiss, mutual, euphoric, and consensual. That's the key. Then he says a consensual peck is enough to get me out of here because people started calling for his job. Here's the thing. Jenny, the woman who was kissed after the statement comes out, Jenny is like, what the fuck are you talking about? This never happened. I didn't try to pick the man up. You would see if I had tried to pick him up. Why would I try to pick up my boss's boss? That makes no sense. Again, there's video. I didn't do that. She said, also, this whole conversation, this back and forth that he's saying, like he asked for permission. He said a little peck. And I said, sure. okay." She said, this also never happened. 
This is what she released on social media after he put out this bullshit. She said his claims were, quote, categorically false and part of the manipulative culture that he has generated. She continues, I feel the need to report this incident because I believe no person in any work, sports or social setting should be a victim of these types of non-consensual behaviors. I felt vulnerable and a victim of impulse driven, sexist, out of place acts without any consent on my part. She continues, quite simply, I was not respected. And then she adds, I was put, quote, under continuous pressure to help with a statement that could justify his actions. And so were my family, friends, and teammates. She said these types of incidents add to a long list of situations that the players have been denouncing. This incident is the final straw and what everyone has been able to witness on live television and have been part of our team's daily life for years. People were calling for his resignation because they were like, bruh, you sexually assaulted the woman and you got to go. You can't keep your job. So dude calls a press conference and everyone thinks that he's about to resign. He starts shouting at the press conference. I will not resign. I will not resign. I think he said it four times. Bruh, here's where it even gets crazier. All the players on the team refuse to play for Spain until he's removed from his post. And still the governing body, the local governing body for Spain is like, "Mm, so yeah, like, I feel you. I feel that you're upset. But like, is this something that he like really should lose his job over? The fuck? As I was reading the comments, they sound about like shit you would expect from people in the States. The worst of us. People were like, yeah, so he kissed her. It's really not that big a deal. All these women and their Me Too shit, like they're blowing everything out of proportion. People can't even express joy anymore. It was just a harmless kiss. Why is she freaking out like this? No, of course he shouldn't resign. No one should lose their job over something like this. And I was like, are you serious? And it was men and women, predominantly men. But still, the Spanish Soccer Federation refused to do shit. So FIFA had to get involved. They oversee all the soccer everywhere. And they suspended him from, quote, all football related activities at national and international level for 90 days. The suspension is better than nothing that Spain was doing, but he deserved to be fired. In response, Spain's Soccer Federation defends him further. They said they would take legal action to defend Rubiales from, quote, lies. It's literally on video. Rubiales said that he's going to launch a defense and he hopes that the truth will prevail and his complete innocence is proven. What? Let me also say this about the Spanish Federation. It's largely governed by men who are defending him. There are also women who work there. 11 of them resigned after the Spanish Federation refused to do shit. This is a mess. Also, just for clarity, when they encountered each other, he was handing out gold medals to the team in celebration for their win. So it just hugely tainted the moment. This story has not ended. People are still trying to get him out of there. FIFA's disciplinary committee said that it opened an investigation into Rubiales. Hermoso, in her statement, said that there's been ongoing actions and that the soccer club has been dealing with this for a while. FIFA's like, oh, really? Say more. Um, So they're investigating further. So hopefully they get him out of there. It's very sad the way people are behaving, but it's honestly kind of what's expected in these circumstances. So many folks really don't like or give even the slightest of fucks about women and their safety or their comfort or anything to do with them, especially when it's over the feelings of a man. And I don't say that to sound bitter. I say that to repeatedly observe situations where... Women's feelings, women's safety, women's autonomy are compromised. And like half the population seems not to care. Doesn't really make you feel very safe as a woman. I saw something the other day. It was another conversation where someone was asking like what women would do if there were no men. All the women answered the same way they always do. They would do a bunch of things where they didn't have to worry about their safety, essentially. And this guy reading the thread was like, if there was no men, who would be there to protect you? And the woman responded, protect us from who? Women don't feel unsafe around other women. Women's fears for their safety that keep them from going running at night 
or fearful of walking through a parking garage or any of the 50 million things that women fear. Their fear is never like a woman's going to jump out and attack them. It's a guy. That's the episode. We'll be back on on Friday. The episode should come out on Friday, not Saturday. I know they've been a little late lately, but I'm just all over the place doing the best I can. Talk soon. Bye.